All right, next up, we are going to improve your text editor even further. We're going to make it so that you can actually save your work and you can save it as either rich text or regular text. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to add a save file dialog. Um, and it's going to be similar to um, the other dialogs we entered. It's not going to show up there. It's just going to show up in our project. Um, I'm going to call it dial save. And we're going to put um, a filter in here, just like the filter we used for the um, for the open dialog. Rather than typing it in, I'm just going to paste it in here. And you can see it looks very much like it, just text files. Um, and then in the parentheses, asterisk text, and the pipe character, and so on. Exactly the same thing. Um, and now, um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go to, uh, we're going to create a button, actually, first. And this button is going to be our save button. Save and I'm going to give it a title of or a text, sorry, not a title, to save. And we want this button to invoke our um, invoke our dialogue that we've just created. So um, but we're actually and, I, and we're not going to put in I think the next step's going to be a little error handling, but um, in the meantime, where we do need an if statement, um, because what we're going to say is if dial save dot show dialog equals dialog result dot OK, then we want to do something. So what does that mean exactly? And we use this structure up here. I don't know if I really explained what it what it did was. So this invokes the, the, the show dialog says show whatever object is here as a dialog. And what happens to be here is the save dialog. So all of this shows it. Well, when you close the show or the dial save or the save dialog or the open dialog or whatever, um, it returns a result, among other things. It returns an object. And one of the, the properties of that object is the result. And the result can be OK, cancel, and various other things. So um, what we're saying is when we open this dialog box, if the way that the user closes it is by hitting the OK button, that means that they've hopefully selected their um, the file that they want to have that. Um, so we need to do something. All right, so um, I could for right now the pass. I don't know if I need to use pass. Sorry, Python is the thinking man. Um, so right now it's not going to do much, um, except it is going to invoke the, the thing. And you'll notice because I put the filter in here, it's going to let me save it as to, uh, as either text files or, or rich text files. Now, um, I can type something in here and hit save, but there's no code for it to do anything. So it's not actually going to create a file or save a file. To do that, we have to write a little more code, and actually not a lot more code. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to say if path.get extension file save file name equals txt I want to do something. So what does this mean? Well, um, let's there. <clears throat> so what does all this do? Well, it Gets the file name that was returned. Like I told you, when we close the save dialog, 
um, if the result was okay, there's a bunch of other properties that get saved at the same time. The, the, the save dialog is a whole object that has a lot of different properties. One of the properties that it has is a file name property. Well, the file name property can be extracted using the path get extension. So what we're saying is whatever um, file name they had in the show in the, in the save dialog, we want to know what it is. And we want to get its extension. And its extension is the dot and then where it's after it. So what we're checking to see is did it return a text file? And if it returned a text file, then we have a very um, simple method called save file. Um, and save file takes two properties. First of all, it takes a file name. And we already know the file name because it was returned from the save from the save dialog um, thing. We used it before, in fact. Oops. Okay, that's the first parameter it takes. And the second parameter is how we want to get that stuff out of the rich text box. And there's a couple of different ways, and they are both saved as rich text box screen type. All right, and so we can save it as plain text, rich text with no OLE objects, rich text, text, text with no with OLE objects or Unicode plain text. Don't worry too much about these OLE objects. Um, we may get to that at a later date, but for right now there's only two that we're interested in. One is plain text, which means save it um, as plain text, a regular old text file. Um, and now we're just going to copy all of this and make a couple of changes. So we're going to say, if it has a text file extension, do that. If it has an RTF extension, we just want to save it as a rich text. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and try this out. Uh, I'm not going to open a file this time. I'm actually just going to type in some new file context. I'm going to set my font. Oh, I didn't select it. Set the font to. I'm going to set the font to um, different big. So there we go. There's our file. That's not grammatically correct, but you don't care, do you? We're going to save that, and we're going to save it in two ways. First of all, I'm going to save it as a text file. Then I'm going to save it as an RTF file, save RTF3. Okay, so um, I'm going to open the saved RTF3 text file. I'm going to open it, and you'll see now I got the, the, the text, you know, plain old text, because I saved it as plain text there. Let me try opening the rich text. Saved RTF3 there. Open that. And there you go. We have now saved our file contents. Now, the important thing about saving our file contents here is, and we've done it through the save dialogs, and um, we actually can do it other ways going to do it other ways later because now what we can do is we can save configuration files so um, we can now create data configurations things like that that will last longer than our application so when we close our application we don't immediately lose that information and i'm going to show you how to do that later on now normally in windows what we would do is we would use the registry to save configuration settings but there are some downsides to that. And one of the downsides to that is um, that we do need some permissions for our application. And in most computers, they would work fine. But in uh, the computer in a monitor environment, like the school, for example, we may be blocked from making changes to the registry. So instead, we can use text files to save 
different settings to save data and things like that. Now that you know how to save data, or at least you, you're starting to get an idea of how to save data, um, you can do that. Now, we don't necessarily need to use the um, we don't need to use the rich text box to save all these things. There's other ways to do it, which you're going to learn later. But if worse came to worst, and this was the only way you knew how to do it, what you could do is you could store your stuff in a hidden rich text box. In other words, you could store all your program settings in a rich text box that nobody could see. And you could use the techniques I've just shown you to save that data as text files. And you probably just want to save it for regular text, not rich text. But that is one way that you can um, save settings and stuff. All right, so that's it for this video.